What is up everybody, Nick here, and welcome to another episode here on the channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing a quick interior mod that's actually a part from a C6 Z06 Corvette. As some of you know, when this car was made, GM was going through some financial troubles. And believe it or not, there was actually some parts that were put into this car that were also used for that C6 Z06 Corvette. Of course, since we are on this quest to 500, I figured I have to put this into the car to help support the mods. So we're gonna be putting that into the car today. What I have here is a D-shaped steering wheel. This is a OEM C6 Z06 steering wheel that has been wrapped in carbon fiber for the top and the bottom and has red leather on the sides. And this has been made by SoCal Garage Works. The rad thing is I'm gonna be able to take all of the guts and components from the center portion of my OEM steering wheel and put it onto this and have a really cool, unique steering wheel for the HHR. Because of the fact that I do put this car into a lot of car shows, I do have to think about the interior and trying to customize it a little bit. I wanna try and keep it as stock looking as possible, but I do have to customize a little bit just so I can turn some heads at car shows. I feel that this is a great start to doing that, so let's get this into the car. All right, so here we are in the car. I have the GoPro because it's gonna just be a little bit easier to record. So here is the stock steering wheel. You can see it's a leather wrapped steering wheel, but here's the center portion that I'll be taking. I'll be taking the airbag center, and I'll also be taking both sides of the um, steering wheel controls. My right side is for the radio and to answer phone calls. My left side is for cruise control as well as getting through the menus of the car as far as like checking out PSI and mileage and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing that we did was we disconnected the battery because of the fact that we are messing with the airbag here. So if you disconnect the battery, there is no power source for that airbag. We don't run into any issues. Also, because we're gonna have to press in the center, we also don't have a horn, naturally. Here's what we got to do to get this steering wheel off. Step one, if you've never done this before, the cool thing is on the side here, you're going to see there's these holes right here on both sides of the steering wheel. You can actually put a component in and press inwards, which actually releases the clip that's holding this center cluster in. So once we push them in and release them, this whole center will come out and it will expose all of the wiring for the steering wheel controls as well as this, the cables for the airbag as well. So we have to get that off first to then get to everything else. So I'm going to relocate the GoPro camera so I can use both of my hands for this and we can get started. All right, that should be a little bit better now that you can see. So uh, we are inside a dark car, so lighting isn't the greatest. We're gonna use this flashlight. Hopefully that can help out just a little bit with trying to see what we're doing here. So here's what I got. I got this various sized hex tool um, from Harbor Freight, which will allow me to fit inside of here. So what I have to do is I actually have to push inwards and then you put this in and you'll feel it catch on. And then when you push in, it'll release. I haven't done this since I bought the car because the bezels from my base model HHR were in better shape than the one that were in this car. So I did that swap really quick. So it does take a little bit, it is a little finicky, but we're gonna try and get this out without messing up this hole or making it bigger or any worse than it currently is. All right, so got it. Next step is we gotta remove the airbag part. So I'm gonna grab the GoPro again so you guys can see what's happening here. Okay, so now that that is out, notice it's the whole center cluster here, but notice we have these two parts for the cables for the airbag. So we have these tabs here, so we just gotta pick these up, lift up the pink, and it looks like a little off-white tab and then those two things will come out and then that'll free this entire center cluster which will be put into the new steering wheel. So I'll go ahead and get started with that. Move the GoPro again so you get a better view and we'll go from there. All right, so some of you are gonna laugh at these dirty Harry pliers but they're the only ones I currently have since I'm still tooling up the garage. This is ridiculous. Why I need stuff this big, you never know. 
but they're the only ones I currently own. So if that helps me get this out, then cool. Okay, so now that I got that part up, got this plastic tab up, should now be able to pop this guy right off. Like so. Gotta do the same thing for that side, so take a screwdriver. Now, of course, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna be too tight with this because you are dealing with airbag mechanisms. Granted, battery is disconnected, so it doesn't matter at this point, but you don't wanna mess up any of the connection parts. So, this tab right here at the top, you have to pull that up, and then with pliers, again, with these ridiculous dirty Harry's, pinch. And up it goes. So now, this is free. And let's take a look. You can kind of see, but let me grab the GoPro again. Okay, so what you can see here is, back up that light a bit, there we go, so it's not so crazy. Um, you're gonna notice that we have a couple connections that we have. We have the hex screws up at the top and then one at the bottom. And then of course we have one two on the sides uh, for the whole steering wheel component area and then of course we have that bolt in the middle once we do all of that we should be able to wiggle and remove all of it so let's go ahead and get started with that see so here are the guts here right steering wheel controls for either side airbag um, we have our three points here for the center portion and then we have this one bolt here that's connecting all of this together. So what we're going to do is undo that bolt and then this entire thing is going to come out. And then we'll be able to start taking the stuff off of this and put it on the new steering wheel. So let's go ahead and let's find out which socket that is and then we can go from there. So it's fun to wind that back up and make sure it's in the right spots. That's why you have to be careful with this, because that can happen. All right, well, we will get to that in a bit, but the thing is, that's back in place for now. It's all wound up, we got the steering wheel, now it's time to get the rest of this off so we can get out of the car at this point and go from there. All right, here we are with the steering wheel. Now what we have to do is we have to remove that so we can get to this backing portion and then we're good to go. So let's go get those tools. Now, here's the horn button, so you can feel it presses inwards. It is spring-loaded, so we have to be pretty careful. But we have to get this part now off, so we can then put it on the new wheel. Let's see if we can make this fit. started but there's really no reason for me to use 
something that's electric on something that could be a little sensitive. So we are going to finish it by hand. We now have to get the backing port, backing pad back on. Okay, so we got the cables for both sides. We got this for the center. So these two will clip into our bezels, which are right here. Now the one thing is, is that these are silver. I'm not a fan of that silver and black. Look, I, I'm just not a fan. So what I'm actually gonna do is we're gonna wrap these in black satin right now. So we'll put this away. And let's wrap these in black satin. That way it gives it a little bit more of a uniform look. So the first thing we gotta do is we have to get the controls out. So now, if you didn't want to do this, no big deal, You all you'd have to do is just pop them back in place, put them in, secure them with the screws, and then you are set to go. But, because I'm not a fan of that silver, we're going to wrap them in this Vivid Made Satin Black. This Vivid Vinyl Wrap is actually super affordable. I think I got this in particular for under $20 shipped through Amazon. Okay, so what we did is we wrapped both the um, control bezels for the steering wheel controls in matte black and we had to use a heat gun and kind of shape it to the form. Not that hard, it's just a little cumbersome because of the fact that it gets real narrow in certain spots but you know, um, once this is back in the steering wheel, you're not going to see any of that so it'll be fine. All right, so steering wheel is done and complete. We just gotta get it back in the car. The problem we're running into now is that clock spring. All of that ribbon that you saw fly out. So if we go into the car, we can take a look. Thing, this, this face plate here, which is the front part of our clock spring, as you saw in the video, popped out when I was removing the steering wheel. That is something that should not happen at all. Now I was able to wound this, wind this back up and put it back in place but it only clipped on one side and the top portion was actually sticking out. I think that's the reason why this came out in the first place. I think it was coming loose. 
Also, from time to time, in a blue, once in a while, I'll get a check airbag warning. It could be because of this, might not be, but either way, we are not going to risk this. This is the airbag clock spring. This is a very um, finicky part, but it's also one that you don't want to mess with. Ribbon is not broken, but I'm not going to rewind it. I'm not going to deal with any of that. So what we did is uh, I called my buddy Rob, who is able to get me a clock spring. Unfortunately, it will not arrive until Tuesday. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that clock spring out. So when the new one arrives on Tuesday, we can put it in place, put it back in, and then we are good to go. But that is going to put this on hold until Tuesday. But look how dope that steering wheel looks. Man, that looks great. Cool. All right, it is now Tuesday. Our part has arrived. It is the new clock spring that has to go into the car. Uh, so if you are replacing your steering wheel in your car, especially your HHR, here is the part number right here. You can get it from any GM uh, dealership, Chevy dealership like that, like I did. Uh, it'll usually arrive in 24 hours and you are set to go. So cool thing about this clock spring is that it is just four screws two on the bottom, two on the top. Notice that you have this lock here that keeps it from moving out of that area right up here. So what you have to do is you have to get this centered up and then make sure that this is set in the right place, pull that tab, and then you can put your steering wheel on. So let's go ahead and get this thing into the car and then we can get the steering wheel on. All right, so if you look carefully, you'll notice there are four screws there are two here and there are two up here so we just got to get this to line up probably easier to connect the harnesses first that's all set to go now the one thing you want to think about this bottom part here you'll notice there are here's the way it goes because there's the lock cylinder you have one two three and I believe there is a fourth no there is there's only three so you'll have one two and and three right here that will drop the whole bottom part So the first thing that we are going to do is tighten up the bottom. I have to open the door in order to get to it, so you're probably not going to be able to see. Looks like it's a 7 millimeter socket is what you have to use for those bolts. And we'll tighten up, be real quick, and then we'll go from there. So now that we have that in place, we can now close the top portion because we no longer need to get behind here. Alright, looks like it moves, which is good. Yep, so we're good there. Turn signal works. Wiper blades work, so let's make sure all of that is off. Cool. Alright, so now with the steering wheel, you'll notice there's a notch in the actual steering column post here, there, and then if you look at the steering wheel carefully, there's an arrow. So you have to make sure that those two things line up. Once those are lined up, you can then remove this tab. Um, you then can get the steering wheel on it and be set to go. So first thing we gotta do is get this wire harness through the actual wheel, because that's where it connects. There we go. All right, so now the wheel is in, everything is connected. All we have to do now is connect the airbag. And we are set. All right, so back in the car, center part. If you're unsure, luckily it is color coordinated. So pink goes to pink, white goes to white. So let's connect them now. 
I don't think there's a specific order. We disconnected the pink first, so let's reconnect that. So it just pushes in, and then that center uh, plastic clear tab gets pushed in as well. And then you're all done. So everything is connected, if I'm not mistaken. The stuff in the back is connected. The arrow is lined up with the notch. Controls are connected. It's always good to do a check because these things are a little finicky to get off in the middle. So one thing, once all of this is together, before you put the center part in, make sure you put the bolt back don't be like me and then notice while you're putting your tools away that you forgot to do that because that could be a serious issue. <laughs> put the bolt back, then put the center portion on, check everything, make sure your horn still works, your controls, all that kind of stuff. Then you're good to go. You can do it, it is easy as you saw, but it doesn't hurt to check. Push it in, snaps in place, horn moves up and down. We are done. The steering wheel is now installed I know it's a little hard to see. That looks awesome. Let me grab this GoPro so you can see a little better from the driver's perspective. There it is. How sweet is that? D-shaped C6 Corvette uh, customized wheel from SoCal Garage Works. We have the actual carbon fiber top and bottom. Sorry, I got red leather on the sides. And then if you look carefully, you can see it's black stitching. You notice now we adjusted the steering wheel controls to be blacked out with that matte black wrap from Vivid Wraps, got it on Amazon, and that's it. Next step is we're gonna connect the battery to it, and then we're just gonna turn the power onto the car. We're gonna check, make sure all the lights illuminate for the controls in the steering wheel. We're gonna make sure the horn works. All right, everything's back to normal. First thing we have to check, does the horn work? Sure does, great. Next step, I'm gonna get out of the way just in case if this airbag deploys. I really hope it doesn't. There we go. Tire low, add air. Okay, that's normal. One of the tires has to get fixed on this car. You can't really see it with the GoPro, but the controls are illuminated. And at least I know that the controls on the left work. The right, I'm not too sure about. Obviously, I have an aftermarket head unit. And they do. We're good to go. Great, so here we are. All done. Steering wheel is set up, ready to go. I know that light is stupid bright, but that'll give you better. There we go. That's it. The uh, Memorial Day weekend is when we're going to start taking this car apart. So stay tuned for that video. If you liked this video and you want to install a C6 Corvette steering wheel in your HHR or your Chevy Cobalt, hopefully this video gives you a cool little tutorial on how to do so including replacing the clock spring, which was something I wasn't expecting to do. Other than that, thank you for checking out the video. Again, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to continue to see the build of this HHR, make sure you hit that subscribe button below, and I'll see you next time.